Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Thanks for tuning into MSD.TV. And today's video originally was gonna be a ruling segment regarding how to resolve the end phase, but I've postponed that till next week. But instead, today we're gonna look into something that is probably a bit more important than just a ruling. We're gonna look into the penalty policy update as of June 4th. Now this is especially important for those of us who are planning on attending future premier level events such as YCS, WCQ, Nationals, and Continentals. Now this update provided us with clear definitions on various terms that was a bit more vague previously, as well as examples on how to issue out penalties for various infractions. In this video, we're mainly taking a look at the definitions of game state. We're going to look into the penalties of unsporting conduct and what constitutes as cheating. So basically, the basic gist of what players should know when they go into these events. Now, if you want more information, I highly suggest you guys to read the whole document just like you guys reading your cards. Now, I want to be responsible and put a disclaimer out there. Now, aside from the text directly quoted from the policy document, anything I mention in this video is based on my interpretation and does not reflect Konami KD or any of the judge representing bodies. I am only representing myself and no one else. All right, now that's out of the way. Okay, we're gonna kick it off by summarizing game state because this is one of the most key important things and sometimes players feel like they get cheated by this whole game state situation. So the newest addition to this game state is accepted game state, which was previously not in this document. So what is the game state? Well, it's basically everything in the game, the current effects, the current cards on the field, cards in hand, banish, graveyard, phase, turn, life points, Everything about the game is the game state. If the game state is healthy, that means everything is proceeding as accordingly, but it can also get damaged by playing illegal actions or forgetting mandatory effects and so on and so forth and forgetting lingering effects, everything like that. So what could happen to those game states? Well, if a game state is damaged, it could either A, be repairable, B, be irreparable or C, accepted. But let's start things off with irreparable as that usually results in a game loss. It could be done by procedural error or it could be done through, I guess, drawing extra cards. So irreparable game states often involve well, not revealing cards that were searched, not revealing cards that needed to be revealed, and now your opponent can no longer confirm whether or not the action was legal or not. That is how you get irreparable game states. So example number one, if you activated reinforcements of the army, added a card, shuffled up your hand, and then revealed the monster after. Your opponent cannot confirm whether or not the card you're revealing is the same card. Therefore, you could have added a heavy storm for all we know, and he can't take your word for it. Your judge can't take your word for it. It's irreparable, so that's why it's a game loss. And that's a draw card, not a procedural error. That's a draw card game loss. That's a draw card major. Now, the next one is what if you have a summoning condition, such as Gladiator Beast Heraklinos. Uh, that's the example that they put right here, which is a duelist returns face down monsters back into the deck to summon out Gladiator Beast Heraklinos, but you didn't reveal the card ahead of time. Do you, oh, I don't have to reveal, man. Like, of course you have to reveal. Like, this has nothing to do with the previous policy update. Uh, you have to reveal because you have to reveal that you have a proper summoning target, which, because Heraklinos can be contact used with set monsters as well. If you're going to be using set monsters, make sure you reveal it so that you have a legal card to show them that, hey, this was a Gladiator Beast monster, or hey, there was a Lakari in that particular play, so the whole thing is legal. Because you could have shuffled in Effect Failure for all we know, and the whole thing basically creates a huge mess, and that would create an irreparable game state. And finally, the other example that they have right here is that you forgot to discard down to the correct legal limit. Now, normally, that's not a big problem. Before you draw a card, you can still like discard a card or whatever. But if you play a card during that time, we don't know whether or not you would have discarded the card that you would have played. Maybe you changed up your plays because you saw the card that you drew, and it combos really nicely with the rest of it. So you just change the discard into a different card. We don't know. And because of that lack of confirmation and the lack of a guarantee that the play was legal, that's what creates irreparable game state in the nutshell. There are much, there are I guess many other different ways that that can also be achieved. Now, what about repairable game states? Well, repairable game states are exactly that. The game state is repairable. You can rewound back to the point where the illegal action happened and then you can just play on from there. Usually both players will receive a warning whenever that happens, like missing a mandatory effect. Remember, it's up to both players to maintain the game state, and if 
anyone gets penalized, both players get penalized for it. Now, what if you can't rewind all the way back? Well, luckily, the answer in the document saying that, well, even if you can't fix up every part of the game state, it can still be known, uh, mentioned as accepted, and you'll just rewound as much as you can. But regardless, uh, looking here, uh, what if you revealed like private knowledge and during that whole rewind? Well, according to this highlighted area, now if a duelist has damaged the game state due to an illegal action or in gameplay, I guess, or missed mandatory effect, etc., it can be rewound to the point of the illegal action. It should be rewound even if the opponent may gain advantage from the information that was previously private knowledge. Okay, so previously. People often say that, oh, you gained knowledge that you wouldn't have, oh man, now the game state is irreparable. Well, apparently not. That is uh, apparently still an accepted game state if you, if you talk about it. So basically, it's just stuff that you forget a mandatory effect and go back to the point, fix it, and nothing really significant happened. But what if it's too far down the line? So to get an accepted game state where you don't really rewind back to that point anymore, so you can get it by both players forgetting a mandatory effect or misunderstood how an effect resolved. Both players will get penalized for this. And if the play was caught later, like you could be caught mid play actually. And, uh, or it was caught turns later and the whole thing was unintentional. You'll get an accepted game state. Yeah. It's like dude forgets to activate something that was mandatory. Judge determines that the whole infraction was intentional. No one was able to recall what happened. Both players will receive a warning and you'll just move on from there. So let me give you a quick quiz on Saryuja Skaldred. Now he has the draw four and put three to the bottom. What if you forget to put the three to the bottom, but instead you shuffled it back into the deck? Is that irreparable, repairable, or an accepted game state? And we'll hear your logic. You can leave it down in the comments section below. And I'll show you guys my answer as well and how I would have uh, tackled this particular question. Now, first of all, is it a repairable game state? No, it is not repairable because the entire interaction involved private knowledge cards and the three cards that you put back to the bottom of the deck, you never reveal it to your opponent anyway. So they were never gonna know what they are. So if you were going to put it to the bottom, are you gonna put three random cards back to the bottom? So automatically the game state is not repairable, but is it an irreparable game state? Now, did someone gain significant advantage? Like sure, your opponent cannot confirm what you put to the bottom of the deck, but you're definitely not adding it to your hand and you're not playing those cards. So in my opinion, it's actually more closer to an accepted game state, which is why I mentioned previously that an accepted game state can actually happen mid play because something was done improperly. So my reasoning behind that is as follows. I'm just gonna read it off right here. First of all, the cards you put back to the bottom they aren't public knowledge and never had been public knowledge ever to your opponent. So they will never know. And if they did know what it was, say they had respect play for, for all I know, and they looked at your hand and they saw the cards being put back, they can confirm then, then again, then that would make it a repairable game state, which is quite significantly different. But what about, well, they don't know what it is the entire time. They were never supposed to know. So, well, that means, uh, there was a card that never needed to be revealed to begin with, so nothing illegal happened, that's for sure. The second thing is, well, the only thing that bad did happen was that you shuffled the cards back in. The second thing is, it doesn't have an immediate impact on the gameplay overall. You're not getting cards to your hand, you're not going to be able to play those cards that you put away. Overall, it doesn't really change too much. The only thing that it does have an impact on is whether or not you're going to draw those cards coming up, and that's the main issue. But the deck the main deck is a set of private knowledge cards that your opponent will never know what is going on. And that's why I think it is a minor, which will result in a warning and immediately go into an accepted game state. Do you guys accept that kind of answer? I was like, oh my God, he, he put cards back and now he could potentially just draw it again. Well, that is also possible. And the game state, like, although this is unrelated to the penalty that you're going to issue, is that in this case, it's also almost self-repairing if the deck gets shuffled. So there's also that possibility. So that's my answer towards that. And also there's actually more to uh, game states. There's misrepresenting the game state, which is also part of unsporting conduct cheating. This actually has happened a lot in the past and I want to be very clear, like, if your opponent asks you the defense of a blue eyes white dragon, like the example right here, you tell them the answer correctly. You do not lie to your opponent. If your opponent asks for an effect of a card, you tell them honestly. 
And this is the funniest one I actually read here. A duelist tells their opponent, now if you show me an Honest in your hand, I will forfeit the game. And then when the opponent reveals the copy of Honest, he activates Mind Crush and selects Honest. That is just completely dishonest. <laughs> wow, dishonest, ha ha ha. But like, you kind of get the idea. Like you, you, you've put your opponent in a case where you would forfeit and you show it because you want to save time, but instead you actually cheated your opponent and by lying to them, and that is uh, cheating, and you'll probably get DQ'd. That's kind of funny. A, du a duelist notices that the opponent forgets to uh, add her banished card pile back into the deck while shuffling into game two and waits for them to draw their opening hand, and calls a judge for an illegal deck. Oh, I've actually had to deal with a call like this before, and uh, this is like the worst kind of rule sharking, which is basically just cheating because one player is not maintaining the game state. Like you can either take the cheating DQ and the other guy, well, he'll might get like a warning. That is, that is just some of the scummiest thing. And then they'll just try to lie out of it. And then it's all up to the head judge how to deal with these situations. But misrepresenting the game state is the equivalent of lying to a official, which is a cheating penalty and will often result in disqualification. Anyways, let's go into unsporting conduct since we're already here. And now we enter the territory of unsporting conduct, which is inappropriate behavior that is considered to be intentional and can be committed by people that are not even in the tournament. While unsporting conduct minor, this one is just being an indecent person that's not willing to listen to anyone else. So you leave trash behind, you eat or drink, you swear, not at other people, but you swear during a tournament, hey man, there's kids around here, take it easy. Uh, but you're not swearing at other people. But you can also insult another player, spectator, or tournament official. That is a no-go, but you're not swearing at them. Um, because that's actually a major offense if you do that. Follow, failing to follow instructions, rule sharking someone for a translation of a card for a card effect that you already know. And there's proof that you know the card because there's that dark hole in your graveyard. What are you asking for a dark hole translation for anyway? Man, what a rule shark. And uh, rule sharking is of course frowned upon. And there's also... A player that is not currently engaged in the match and not getting out of the way, just blocking the aisles. I usually don't like people getting in the way because they could also be doing another type of cheat, which is signaling. Using an electronic device that's not a calculator, so you can't have you know, iPods in your ears. You, you, it has to be a calculator, a device that is a calculator or a medical device. Next, we have clothing that's offensive. You have to cover it or you will risk an upgrade. Remember, this is a public, this is a public venue, okay? So don't, don't mess that up. Ah, this one's for Yugi tubers. Uh, recording in an area that has no clearance for you to record. You could get kicked out for this. I've, I've, I've been issued warnings for that before. <laughs> Just speaking the truth. Uh, a duelist appealing a floor judge before the floor judge has finished giving an answer to the judge call. Okay, these two here, I want to talk about these two in particular because this happens so frequently. This is a major disrespect to the judges. Let the judge do their job properly so that you waste the least amount of time. Like, why would you appeal a judge before they even give the answer? It's funny because I've seen like a judge call, they give you a bad, like they give a bad call, but it's actually in favor to you. And then you appeal it and now you screwed yourself over and you actually lose your game over it. Like, I don't know. The judges are also kind of, well, they're definitely part of the tournament as, uh, as um, arbiters, but for sure, it's really funny how sometimes it's just, you know, what goes around comes around. And then requesting a penalty. I've had this on multiple occasions. It, this is one of the ones that infuriates me the most. Like telling me how to penalize someone rather than let me do my job. Like it, these are the ones that often resolves in like results in someone's getting their penalties upgraded because like, oh, they thought like, oh, that guy made an infraction. Cool. We, we give him an infraction. And then all of a sudden the other guy gets a game loss because he's uh, trying to influence the, the, the decision. And that's just no good. This one is a bit of an interesting one. Deliberately making an unfair trade with a less experienced player. I'm guessing this one's kind of like bullying. We're not we're not encouraging of trade sharking. So keep that in mind. A, play, a person lacking decent hygiene. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you lack hygiene, you'll get penalized for it. Uh, okay. Player demands a specific judge to answer a judge call. This is why you don't ask for a Tomboxed at an event to answer your judge call. All right. 
just don't do that just respect all judges wake up early they have to get dressed they have to be ready they have to be clean and they have to be ready to answer anything and tackle anything that may ha may or may not happen remember it's a customer service job in the end so yeah there's tons of that stuff going on so yeah i guess uc minor just being an indecent person that's not willing to listen what about uc major now you're being a sore loser and an angry person and therefore you will get a game loss ironically if you get if you're a sore loser you lost the first game and then you start using profanity towards another player uh you could actually get a major infraction and then basically lose the entire match altogether so if you throw a chair after losing a match that means this penalty goes towards your next match before you even start refusing to sign or rip up a slip i get it you have no self-control whatsoever so this is a sore losers kind of penalty you'll get game losses now you see severe most of your penalties were match losses but if you have an unsporting conduct severe it's disqualification and this is basically just crime that you can't do anywhere you wouldn't do this whether or not you're at a tournament or not but if you do at a tournament you'll result in getting banned and even if you're not part of the tournament you're not enrolled in there here's what's gonna happen you're gonna get enrolled by the head judge and then they'll disqualify you in the system like you there has been like a case where someone wasn't even in that country and they got enrolled and then they got uh they got <laughs> they got dq'd so that has happened before so a duelist may be already dropped they will just be reinserted back into the tournament and then disqualified yeah so that being said you can get disqualified in many ways and everything about uc severe is a crime stealing racial and sexist slur that's just hate crime uh i guess you have harassment verbal assault physical assault damaging and defacing property uh, intoxicated and bringing illegal substances or weapons or anything that is not allowed at the event that will result in you getting banned okay and of course if you threaten someone you're definitely going to be part of this category and finally we have another type which is cheating which is dishonesty in gameplay this is probably the most severe penalty that a judge can give and well these will they don't they don't actually have to happen at a tournament wow i didn't know that that's something new so katie there's no tolerance towards anyone doing cheating and bribery and collusion are considered to be cheating first of all uh i guess for uh, collusion intending to draw a match that's happening with among top players because they want to maintain their top spots and taking one point each could guarantee that they will both make it to the next round i'm just gonna go through each one of these because it's actually very important to know all of them intentionally drawing extra cards while your opponent's not looking you're just basically adding additional cards from your deck to your hand basically card draw cheat like every single part of this document has like slow play major minor strict these are all basically the cheat level of each of these so yeah this is draw cards additional next one is concealing part of their field uh, misrepresenting game state to influence gameplay so misrepresenting game state is going to result in cheating that's why sometimes when you put the deck like horizontally forward and put the graveyard backwards the concern there is that you're hiding your graveyard your opponent can't see your graveyard and they make a misplay because they couldn't see and there is an argument to be made there because your deck is hiding, physically covering your cards. If you look at your deck at an angle, I can't see your graveyard. Now we have a problem, and uh, they can call judge on you on this. And uh, and you're and they're wondering why you're taking so long to make a play. because I can't see your graveyard. I can't consider all my options. So that's why a lot more people have been playing with these zones a bit more correct. Even if they're gonna tilt their deck sideways, they leave the graveyard in the front. Okay. So that's uh, that's also one thing there and uh, a, a duelist intentionally withholds information on how a card works to trick the opponent into revealing additional advantage yeah, okay so this has happened many times in the past and one of my friends actually was a victim of this where he attacked into a performer pole uh what was that 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 snake man that lets him draw cards if the cards are destroyed and it ultimately resulted in my friend losing is because the other player mentioned that it doesn't have any effects and like and then when he declared the attack he said oh yeah by the way it has this effect and then my friend lost the game and he's like well why didn't you tell me that earlier oh i don't know like they made up some excuse and that was 
that was disgusting and I lost respect for the other guy because of it. And uh, a duelist intentionally plays slow in order to influence the end of the round. This is stalling. This is not slow playing. This is called stalling. And we get a stalling. Yeah, that's uh, that's immediately DQ'd. So let me explain the difference between that. Slow play by definition is not intentional. Stalling, on the other hand, is. And if there is ample evidence to believe that you are stalling, you have no plays in your hand, you have nothing, you're not even making an effort to make a decent play, then you're stalling. You're just searching your deck constantly, you're just taking like a minute or two for the search. Disgusting. And lying to a judge during an investigation, lying to a tournament official, just when they're making an investigation, just answer what you need to answer. Intentionally mark cards is kind of mark cards cheating, which is, well, they're marking cards on the deck. And you could be marking your own deck and you can even be marking your opponent's deck because now you're actually damaging their stuff so that's unsporting conduct. That's that's pretty bad. Uh, that's severe, and you could potentially be pushed towards cheating as well. It could be like a double offense. A what else do we have? Okay, so we have offering money for booster packs or any compensation for the win. That's bribery, and accepting it is collusion. So both of these are punishable. And uh, refusing to answer a question about public knowledge. Again, that kind of goes with the misrepresented game state previously mentioned. A spectator signaling a duelist about card information. Uh, that is major, major cheats. I've seen it happen, which is why I don't like people playing behind me, especially when you see people wearing the same jersey and they're doing that, it's disgusting. Then we have a player notices markings on his opponent's sleeve, basically back pocket winning. By then it means like, oh, I'm about to lose and I'll pull out the back pocket win. If there's ample evidence to support this, uh, especially when he, a player was about to lose, then this raises a lot of suspicion and don't do that. A duelist deliberately enters a tournament with someone else's ID, that's tournament fraud. Don't try to earn your friend's invite, in other words. A duelist intentionally takes three minutes to decide knowing that there's less than three minutes in the round. See, I've heard about this a lot and this is again, stalling. You can't stall. If you're not gonna side like that, then what are you gonna do? Your intent, we can believe that it is intentional, especially when we know that you are one game up. A duelist deliberately shifts a position of the card in order to influence a link summon, misrepresenting games. Is this specific towards link summoning? I know I'm looking this way a lot, it's because I'm just reading off of the document with you guys. Duelist falsifies a match slip, tournament fraud. So there is a loophole in this one, unfortunately. Uh, what happens here? is that a duelist <sighs> like if you're gonna scoop to your opponent just don't declare there's attacks and just scoop it up <laughs> all right that's the easiest way or just immediately just sign a match slip so that you don't have to deal with a tournament fraud charge okay and rolling a die to determine the winner of the match tournament frauds because they didn't really play the tournament they just rolled a die uh if your opponent offers you to roll the die to, for the match you can just say i do not accept this and just call a judge just call a judge and point at him he's like he, uh, he tried to make me roll for a win and then they'll get the loss and you'll get the win that's very simple duelist agrees to end a match and a draw this tournament fraud hey th isn't that just that's just collusion that's that's just that's just well i guess you're agreeing to end the match rather than stalling for gameplay to end the match uh yeah that's that's a slight difference right there a duelist alters the result of the match slip after the match is officially over again these are all just tournament fraud and a duelist refuses to change phases in a game in order to influence the end of the round. Ah, so this actually happened to me uh, previous WCQ. And I'm glad that this is being addressed now because this was when I was playing Trickstar Sky Striker. My example was that I wanted to go into battle phase and swing into my opponent. My opponent says he has a card to activate. Judge, the assistant head judge comes over and says, what are you gonna activate? Like, tell me, do you have any card to actually activate? And he's like, oh yeah, I have a potential. I was like, okay, what do you have to activate? Well, he oh, flips over his set card. His set card was like a Widow Anchor, but he has a monster in control, which is uh, his Kandina. And I have my Mech Knight that's about to swing for game in time. So you, you said he's still in the main phase, but he's declaring it's in the battle phase. Oh, I never let him go into the battle phase. So you're stalling me, preventing me to go into the battle phase, saying that it's still main phase. And the judge says, it's the battle phase. 
because there was nothing that he actually could activate. Now, a duelist adds and removes a card from their steel pack, so that's a uh, deck altering. So, if you alter your deck. So, that kind of covers all of the unsporting conduct, different kinds of cheating. Most of it's collusion, stalling, misrepresenting game state, stalling, and tournament fraud. Those are the main key culprits that's going to get you disqualified. Hopefully, you guys don't get hit with these things. And if someone tries to offer the die roll, the most common one is that die roll one. Or, why don't you just give me the win? You can. You can scoop at any time, as long as there's no prize incentive going with that scoop. Whew. Anyways, that's a lot of reading, guys. And hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about game state as well. There's, this document is quite thorough, and if you're going to be studying to become a judge, definitely read up on this document, because you don't want to be issuing the wrong penalty. And this, this, this was actually my weakest forefront, and I'm glad I got to read it with you guys. Let me know what you guys think about various things here, like especially like game states, except a game state, what you guys think about it, and all these penalties. Do they make sense for you guys? That is all I got for this video. If you guys enjoyed this policy read, I'll do my ruling on the end phase next week before WCQ so that you guys will have a better understanding, especially when this involves Mystic Mind again. And I got a couple impossible rulings that I guess judges just won't really know. Until next time, hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time. Hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a really good weekend.